Great, so welcome back everyone. Our monthly my speaker, our monthly my speaker business community call, and it's so great to have you back. And I know we had a little bit of a break uh, because we did not have a call in December. So now fresh 2020 with another one of our amazing community calls. And everyone that's been here with us knows the game, and everyone that hasn't, let me introduce you about what we are here doing together. But first of all, um, you know, we, as you're part of our speaker community, um, you're obviously wanting to make your speaker business flourish further. So we get together once a month here in that space. Where we bring people together from all over the globe. And already today, we have people from all over Europe, US, and possibly also some people from Asia will again join us today. And these calls are just there for you to get some practical hints and tips on how to make your speaking your speaking business your business flourish further that you, and we want to give you hints and tips that you can apply right away and uh, you can ask your own personal questions on how to step up with your speaking and your business and also we want to offer you a space where you can exchange with other professional speakers and also if you have any kind of high priority projects you can share that with us here let us know about it um, ask for help and support and also um, for us Europeans, for some of us, it's lunchtime. You know, for some of you, it's uh, the morning. Breakfast time for some of you might already be dinner time. So we all also just want you to come and join us and have fun together. And uh, you know the, rule, the rules of the game. Um, we love to make it your call, even though, as you know, we've again invited a really precious expert guest with us today. Um, but uh, let's make it interactive. It's your call, so ask your questions anytime, either in the chat or unmute yourself uh, when uh, our guest invites you to do so. Also, mute yourselves when you're not speaking. And again, remember when you are speaking out, and you know you will be filmed because we want to make sure we keep this um, as a recording for you in our Hall of Fame, so you can tap back into it again and again. And today we have an incredibly important topic that I think we as speakers and as entrepreneurs, we cannot walk around it anymore. We have to sooner or later jump right into it. And that is we need to have a powerful online platform to become heard and seen in this loud, crowded, much more competitive world. We want to be seen um, as someone that stands out. So the question is, how do we, especially as speakers, get found online um, and get booked as speakers how do we also not just get booked and find clients, but how do we really provide much more value? Um, you know, also because providing more value means making more money and increasing our impact as speakers, as entrepreneurs online. That's what we'll talk about today. Um, and who is our expert guest today? Um, she's really a special friend of mine. Um, we are both working together on in, in growing and 10xing our businesses and our impact and serving in greater ways. And uh, she's really an expert in strategic web website design and she creates online software systems um, to really support consistent sustainable growth for business owners speakers and charities globally and i know she's built platforms that have been used by thousands and thousands of people learning based on these platforms um, make, helping people to really finally get a website in place where they are found where they attract clients and she's also an established speaker and a believer in encouraging entrepreneurship in young people so you know, she's also supporting um, young entrepreneurs and younger people. Um, so she's sharing that mission and passion of mine as well. And she <laughs> is the founder of, the, you know, the Hastings-based web agency called Fat Promotions Limited. And I think Fat Promotions sounds like a sweet promise in itself already, where she and her team are creating effective websites and online solutions, really for a portfolio of international and blue chip clients. And personally, she loves classic cars. Okay, no surprise so when you get to know this lady. Um, she loves red wine, which again um, is one of our shared passions and she plays the ukulele. So you can ask her questions about that if you want to, but most importantly, Fiona, let me welcome you and I invite all of you to welcome with me with a very open mind and heart, Fiona Armand-Train. And uh, Fiona, it's great to have you with us today. 
Thank you, Monique. It's lovely to be here and thank you so much. That's such a kind introduction. Um, and I'm so excited to meet some uh, of your fellow speakers and, and just share a little bit about how they can really harness the power of technology and the internet to really get your message out there, guys. That's what it's, it's all about. Um, so I, I spoke with Monique and, and said, what would you like me to focus on? And, and she said, well, you know, we talked about why it's so important for speakers to have a solid online platform. Now, I'm biased, so I think it's a website is essential for everybody, but your online platform is more than a website. It's the way it's your brochure, it's your leaflet, it's your networking event that you're not at. It just puts you everywhere. And that's the number one power of having a really good, solid online platform, in my opinion, for speakers particularly, because it's the best way to showcase what it is that you do. Because you can have a CV or a resume that says, oh, I've spoken here and I've spoken there. And that's all great. But people want to see you. They want to know who am I actually going to get? What do they look like? Even silly things. What's their accent? Are they right for my target audience? Do they speak with a, a young, if, if you're speaking to a young group, I'm, Monique mentioned that um, I deal with entrepreneurs, young entrepreneurs, and you have to speak to them on their level. So it's, it's a way to make a really great introduction for the way you speak to people online. And they can do it in their own privacy, in their own office, on their phone, whatever. So it's that accessibility. It puts you everywhere. And that, that's the most important thing. That's, that's why it's so, so key for, for all speakers to have a great online platform. And of course, it gives you a level playing field, which is a, a UK expression, I think, which is um, it puts you on the same level as speakers. If you've spoken at five events and you're, um, they're considering you against somebody who's spoken at 500, it, it doesn't matter. They can't tell that. They shouldn't be able to see that. We built websites for individuals and we built websites for multinational companies and they have the same kudos. They have the same gravitas online because they come across as slick and professional and everything you want to find out about them is on those websites. And that's something that I would really encourage every speaker particularly to include on theirs is have a really good high end professional website but I'm biased, as I said, so that's not surprising. <laughs> Having a well-written website is key, and that's something I've known quite a few speakers who struggle with that, and I don't know why, uh, because people I know who are very eloquent and get their point across really well, then struggle to actually write out how they do what they do, and they, they don't like the writing part. I'm doing this with my fingers, you can't see. I speak with my hands. I spend half my time in France, so I speak with my hands all the time. Um, so it's with the written word, just have it transcribed is the easiest thing. How you want to speak through your website, just speak into your microphone and have it transcribed. There's technology does it, there's apps that do it, there's real people that do it. Um, but have that transcribed so that your website doesn't come across as awkwardly written. It comes across as your voice. I always say to people, whether it's your website, your social media platform, um, anything that you're doing online, it needs to have a consistent, clear voice that really authentically represents who you are. Because as individuals, we are selling ourselves it's not a nice term, but we are selling ourselves rather than here's my product, here's my service, sign up for this. It's sign up for me. Here I am. Here's what I do. It's very personal. And I think that's one of the things I love about working with speakers because they don't mind being personal. They know they are their best product. They are their best service. And that's what to convey online. So the writing part of it just speak and have it transcribed that would be a really key thing that i would i would suggest with that to help you get over that that little barrier that some people have i was making some notes as well and i was talking about you know what's really key from the speakers we've worked with and obviously video 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 
Monique teaches this better than anybody I know. So she knows all about, you know, the importance of good video, your good lighting, your technical side of things, all that sort of stuff. But it's just getting that across that eye contact um, and making sure that little bits so that I think some people, and I'm sure Monique has told everybody this, but some people miss out just at the end of your video, having your web address. At the end of your video, how to contact me, what's next. So just those little basics that you guys have probably already got in place, but it's worth just going back. I bet if you look at some of your really early videos, you didn't have that. <laughs> we all forgot it at first. I, I know I did. I've got some videos out and it doesn't even say who I am or where to contact me. It's just me talking. So. <laughs> Um, and also um, connecting you with uh, on social so having I would say to people you have a different voice I mentioned that voice I'm going to come back to that again and again it's really important is is having a different voice on different social media platforms particular age group they tend to be a particular gender it depending on who you're aiming at so you're quite specific in, in Facebook groups or on your Facebook page. Oh, I lost my connection. Did I go? I dropped off. Oh dear. <laughs> okay, I think the last thing I think I heard was something like uh, Facebook. So you said that we should uh, have a different voice on different social media. Um, that's right, that's right. So for example, we target uh, clients on LinkedIn. So when I'm speaking to a client on LinkedIn, I make sure I'm speaking to the specific decision maker in a company. So if I'm dealing with larger companies, when I, when I do a video on LinkedIn, it's for the decision maker. So in our case, we do a lot of uh, government websites. We do local government websites and national government websites. And they are very, there's particular keywords that they listen out for. So they want to hear measurables, return on investment, that's a key one, um, and um, results. So there's all of these, they're all about the end game. So they want to hear those words. So if I record a video for LinkedIn, I make sure I include things like, you know, the end result will be this, that, and the other. And it has to be something that they can then show to their boss rather than something you will make more money if it's for government or you're dealing with somebody middle management in a company, they're not going to make the money. So it's dealing with, it's dealing with what they're actually facing, which is it will then keep your boss happy. You could, you know, be in, in for promotion. There's all of that sort of thing. So it's what, what matters to them. Whereas on Facebook, if I'm talking to individuals one-to-one, -one, it's you will increase your exposure, which is the number one thing everybody wants to increase online. Um, you will attract new clients and you'll make it easy for people to reach out to you. So they're all attract and reach out, they're very personal terms. So if I'm doing uh, videos for Facebook, it's very personal wording and emotive wording. So it speaks to their heart, not, not just their head. So depending on where you're speaking, it needs to be that different voice. If it's online, obviously if you're in a room of 200, you could have a whole mix, but if you're speaking online, then just it's focusing that, that tone of voice, that tone of conversation on who you're actually speaking to. That's really key. If anybody's got any questions about that, I'm, I'm quite happy to answer. If anybody's got any, we're cool, right? I shall press on my next little nugget of <laughs> information. <laughs> Um, it's looking as well at, at what you're frequently asked for. That's one of the things that I say on a website. It used to be very popular to have a frequently asked questions page. And I think now people tend not to read them. When we look at statistics for websites we build, people tend to look at, uh, they come to your homepage primarily. Then they look at about you. So they want to find out who's the person they're going to be dealing with. And then they come to how do they contact you? They tend to be the, the, the first three pages people go to. Then they'll go back and look at your services and your press releases and all this sort of stuff. But they, they want to know basically who you are first. But that's not to say there's not things you can't take off your desk. So if you're regularly mailing out 
a bio sheet and doing as a, an attachment to emails. If somebody says, we're interested, can you send us a biography? Don't send it as an attachment to an email, send them a link to a page on your website that has that. Because the chances are once they're on your website, they will stick around. They'll have a look, they'll look at other pages, they'll find out more about you, and that makes them much, much more likely to convert into a customer. Conversion is the big thing. I can give you a hundred tips to drive loads and loads of traffic to your website, but if they don't convert into paying customers, it's really not worthwhile, in my opinion. There are other people who say, oh no, you just want 10,000 visitors every week. I'd rather have a thousand people who buy than 10,000 people who look and go away. So for conversion, that, that's a real key tip is to put that up there. You've got your biography, but you want to put it online so they get to your website, spend more time on there. Also make it easy for people to share what they see on your website. If they're interested in it, always have those little share buttons that says share this on Facebook, share it on Twitter, share it on Reddit, share it wherever you want to. But always have those included on every page. Even if you think, well, nobody's going to want to share this bit, they might. And help them to spread the word for you. That's really important. That's really key. And reviews, 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 reviews. You can have a whole page of testimonials on your website if you want to, but please don't. Because nobody reads a page of testimonials. They will read the first two, maybe three, and then they ignore the rest. You're better to put one testimonial on every page of your website. Or like two or three on your home page is fine, absolutely fine. But if they're reading a page all about how you speak to particularly, say your particular strength is speaking to groups of, of women in their 40s, just don't, don't know why I randomly picked that, but if you have that as a, as a target audience, then have a testimonial on that page from someone who said, when you came and spoke to my group of mature ladies, it made such a difference because you spoke on their level or blah, 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 whatever you pop in there. Make sure that obviously you steer your testimonials from these people to include that sort of stuff. I'm not saying be right it, don't misunderstand me. Just, just steer them to say, you know, would you give us a testimonial about how we helped uh, the ladies in your group? And, and was it because we spoke to them on a, on a similar level or we had respect for, you know, the position they're in in their careers or something like that? So you can just tie it together because then it's relevant. If I have a page on my website about how we work with charities we do lots of websites for charities on that page i have a testimonial from a charity saying since you redesigned our website we now have attracted loads more volunteers or we ha now have more trustees so it's relevant so uh, it's it's a trick that they use i don't know if they use it everywhere in the uk it's a trick that they use um sweeties at the checkout when you go to the supermarket they always put sweets right by the checkout. Now, I only came in for milk and bread, but I'm gonna come out with a bounty or a Mars bar or some piece of chocolate, because it was just there. And I'm already committed, I'm already here, I'm already a customer, I'll take that as well. And that's what we're doing with your website. So they're already here, they're already looking at your page about how you speak to groups, and they read a testimonial that says, and she's really good at it, and it's just that extra thing that makes you go, oh, go on then, I'll reach out. That's what's, that's what's key. And that also means you want your call to action. That's your key thing, is your call to action straight away, every single page. Don't expect people to scroll back up and click contact us. If they're on that page and they're reading about what you do, they really, really want to be, this is what we do, look how good we are at it, and you can click here right now and we'll talk to you about what you need. So that's, that's a really useful one as well. That, that helps. And anything else that you send out, anything you're regularly putting as email attachments, have them on your website. Because if you get them on your website, they stay and they convert. So I have three little nuggets from, from all of that, really, that I wanted to share. Um, the, the key one I did say about is conversion, but also be found. It's being found, and that's good code for your website. There are a lot of sites like Squarespace and WordPress where you can just make your own site, but they don't automatically get picked up by search engines. It's really worth investing, even if it's just, you know, a, a 
a few hundred dollars, just get someone to check over your site and make some adjustments to make sure you get found. Because if they don't find you in the first place, they can't convert. So really being, being visible is so important. And that can also mean getting reviews on other sites. I mentioned reviews earlier. So it's not just testimonials on your site, but reviews on Facebook and reviews on Google, really important. So if you haven't already, I'm sure a lot of you have, but if you haven't already, make it part of your closing process. When you finish a project, when you, when you finish working with a client, always send them a link to your Facebook page and say, would you leave us a review on Facebook? Or if you're looking at corporates, would you leave us a recommendation on LinkedIn? Or if you're looking generally, would you leave us a recommendation on Google? But give them the links so it actually goes to your Facebook page, to your LinkedIn page, to your Google Plus listing, because then they could just click a button and do it because people are lazy. If they have to go and look and try and guess how to leave a review, they won't do it. And the reason the reviews are so, so important online is because Google actually includes that in deciding how far up you come in the listings. So if I'm looking for, I'll keep picking on these poor women over 40. <laughs> so if I'm looking for a coach for women over 40 and there you've got three reviews on Google Plus that say really good with women in the age group, really good with women, my women in their 40s all really related to what she, he had to say, you will come up above other listings because you have those reviews and Google picks up reviews from Facebook and it picks up reviews from LinkedIn. So even if you don't have reviews on Google, if you've got good reviews on Facebook, Google will give you a higher placement because you have those reviews. So that's really worth doing. The second thing is being clear. As I mentioned, it's that call to action. Just make it really, really clear what you do straight away. We did have one client who I absolutely love. We're still working with them. When she first came to us, she had this beautiful website, but it was all about dancing. And she said, you know, life is a dance and we follow these steps and it takes us to a beautiful symphony. And I was thinking, I don't know what you do. And she was a, she was a life coach, but she loved dancing, but she'd use this really intricate analogy of what she does to try and express it in an interesting way, but nobody knew she was a coach. And she didn't have the words life coach in any of her wording, any of her writing on the screen didn't say life coach. So make it really clear. It's, it's more important to be clear than to be cute in, a, in the nicest way. That's really important. Um, and that call to action everywhere. The next step is book an appointment. The next step is call us now. The next step is click here to email me. The next step is fill out a form. Really, really important. Every single page. Don't feel like it's repetitive. It is, but it doesn't matter. <laughs> Just don't worry about it being repetitive. And my third one is having been found and being clear, be everywhere. This is kind of an offline way to promote your online platform. Your web address should be everywhere. I actually still receive business cards from people at networking that doesn't have their web address on and it makes me weep. It just makes me weep. It's got their email and they say, well, people can guess the web address. Don't make them guess. They don't have to guess. Put your web address everywhere. So on your business cards, your email signature with a nice catchy line above it. Don't just put www.whoyouare.com. Put, you know, can, uh, see our latest work. Connect with me on LinkedIn and on our website. Always have web address, web address, web address. If you have an office, you can get that really, those really nice stickers that go in the window where it's like an etching, looks like it's etched into the glass. Put that up. So even when your office is closed, people walking past will see that. If you sell um, anything online, I always say to customers, put your web address on the receipt so that when they print it out, it's on their desk, people will see it. You can do that with your invoices as well. So include your web address on your invoices. Again, with a nice little line, see our latest work, watch my latest video, read my latest blog, but something like that. So always have it because don't forget, people still love paper. <laughs> they absolutely love paper. I do. Shame. But they will print it out. So if you send them an invoice and it's got your web address, it could be lying on their desk for two, three days, four or five people could see it. So that's, that's another way to just include it. I tell you a great one is write it on your badge if you go to B&I. 
if you go to networking and um, in my BNI chapter, we have these nice little printed badges. They're just paper, they're just cardboard stuck in a little plastic sleeve. I've put my web address at the bottom of it. So everybody talking to me can see my web address on my badge when they're speaking to me at BNI. So even when I'm offline, you know where to find me online. It just makes it part of it, it's really cohesive. And also when you comment on people's posts, if you engage with people on uh, social media, on Facebook and things like that, without being salesy, it's a fine line, but if someone, there was someone yesterday who commented about uh, clients not being specific in their brief and how it goes off at a tangent and there was a lot of discussion going on and I put in mind, well, we find um, that when we link to a site from our own fatpromotions.co.uk, that we always make sure we explain what that website's about before we link to it. So it just makes it that little bit more, it makes it that little clearer for people going to look at it. And it just brings your web address into the conversation. It should always be there. Again, people can click your name, then they can click your biography, then they can click your website. It's too many clicks. People are lazy. <laughs> they just want it there. They want it really, really obvious. Because whatever sort of online platform you have, you, you can improve it. And um, that's not to say it's not good enough. It's just we believe in, you know, better published than perfect. It's really, really, really important because you're always going to be perfecting it. You can always be adding to it. So I, I would really urge everybody to have a, have a look at your own platform and see, you know, is it really obvious if they can book online? Is that really obvious on every single page if they can book to come and see you or speak with you? Are, are your videos nice and prominent? Um, you know, is it what do I do next to reach out to you? What do you want me to do? And, and it needs to be optimized. So be found, be clear, and be everywhere. Because as I always say to people, a website cannot be measured by how much it costs, but by what it delivers. And your website should really deliver for you. It should be part of your team. It should be your silent salesman working all the time to bring inquiries in. And that's three things that I think you can do to, to help with that process. So if anybody has any questions, I'm, I'm really happy to answer them or completely unrelated to what I've said, as long as it's websites, that's my thing. <laughs> well, Fiona, I have a gazillion questions, but why don't you share with us what you want to share and then we can jump, jump in further. And everyone here, you know, I just invite you, this is your opportunity to connect with uh, Fiona and really ask her any questions that come to mind in terms of your own online presence that could be website related or what do you do to get more people to your website or get more clients from your website any questions like that that you might have make sure that you're asking them right here right now okay awesome on this call well, if anybody has lots and lots of customers and they're not converting if that's a problem that's that's usually something we see lots of visitors but not converting Great. I mean, you know, there, there's a gazillion question that everyone asks. Uh, Fiona, would you love to ask some questions now or do you want us to wait for yeah. later or, yeah? Yeah, no, I'm, I mean, I'm perfectly happy. Yeah, I mean, um, why, why don't we also ask in this uh, group here, do all of you have a website already or, you know, or not? You can also just in, in the chat mention, uh, you know, mention what your website status is, right? Um, if you have one, if you don't have one, okay. And yeah, okay, Doug is saying yes, okay. Um, are there people here that don't have one yet? Oh. Okay, yes, Claudia, that yes. I know Claudia has a great, beautiful website. You just uh, changed it recently, right? Okay, so let me let me ask all of you, um, just to also help you and support you in the greatest way having Fiona here with us. Let me ask you, on a scale of one to 10, how happy are you with your current website right now? And let's put into the focus what Fiona just said. The most important thing is that your, your website is supporting your needs, mm -hmm. meaning that you get people to visit your website, you get visitors to actually engage, opt in, uh, maybe buy your event. I know Claudia, you're also promoting your events on your website, right? So, you know, I, I hope all of you are promoting something, but let me ask you on a scale of one to 10, in terms of my website is supporting my business in the greatest possible way. It really attracts clients. It really converts visitors. Um, 
on a scale of one to ten, where would you say it is at the moment? And if you are on the smaller scale, and please put it here into the chat. Don't be shy. No one sees it. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, one of you is even saying zero, and some of you are saying oh, no. two. Okay. And it's okay. I mean, again, remember we are here. We are having a safe space. All we want is if your website is at a nine, we want to make it ten. If your website is at a five, we want to make it ten. <laughs> okay. Or at least seven or eight. You know, the important thing is, as Fiona said, it's better to do something that moves you forward than doing nothing, right? So, um, and once you are saying, whatever your number is, ask yourself, what would make it a 10? What do you think is missing or the other way around? What is not working right now on your website? Even if it's a seven already, one of you said seven, which is great already, right? Congratulations on that. But if you say seven, what is not happening? What would make it a 10? And and then this would be the question you want to ask Fiona, right? So um, like, for example, if you say, you know, if it's seven, what would make it 10? Maybe you have already a lot of people visiting it, but they're not necessarily connecting with you or, mm -hmm. you know, they're not booking your events or they're not opting into, you know, whatever you're offering on your website. What is mm -hmm. missing? Um, and uh, Fiona, while everyone is thinking about what is not mm. happening on my website and what I would I love to happen, and what could I ask Fiona to make sure I get some hints and tips on how to make it happen, just ask yourself. Um, so Doug is saying little, little visitors and no conversion. So Fiona, that's probably what I hear most, right? And when people come to you, they probably say, you know what, I don't have enough people coming to my website. And even mm -hmm. when I have people coming to my website, they're not sticking they're not signing up on my opt-in or they're not booking a time mm. with me um why don't we take these two as a starting point which i think we could probably spend days together on just these two questions right but yes, why definitely. don't we start with it can I, I have I, a look know, at yeah. sorry can i can i have a look at douglas's site now is that am i allowed to do that um do you really want to look at a site or do you just want to give some suggestions to everyone you think it's more valuable to to share some hints or suggestions in concrete yeah. ways? The biggest thing, if you're not getting visitors, is you're not getting found. That's that's the right. key thing. That's the mm -hmm. that's really the key thing. So um, in your website, the, the number one secret tip is your page title. Now that is actually something in the code. So you can get somebody off you know upwork or people per hour or somewhere like that who will just go in and say i just want my page titles optimized um because um i can see i'm i'm sorry i'm sneaking a look at douglas's <laughs> douglas's website and douglas has got a really lovely strap line using hope to save lives just fantastic but the top of his website just says brinker communication consulting services your page title is what Google looks at first, first and foremost. So change that page title to that lovely strap line that you have and include the suicide victor. I think that's really, really key because that's what people will be looking for. So if, um, for example, my website says um, Fat Promotions web design um, and online systems to take you to the next level. So if somebody's looking for, I want to take my business to the next level, I want to go online to the next level, I've got those keywords in that title. That's really, really important. It's page, meta page titles. So have a look at that. That's, that's really, really going to help. That's really, really going to help. That's just to get you visible. The other thing is Google Places. If you don't have a um, Google Oh, what do they call I think they call it Google My Business now. They've changed the name about six times. It drives me crazy keeping up. Um, but Google, Google My Business, if you look at literally the words Google My Business, Google that, and it comes up and it's how to get one of those nice listings. So when you see listings come up and you've got a listing of all the different websites and there's one big one over here and it's got photos and it's got their opening hours and their phone number, that's a Google Places or Google My Business listing that can really, really help you. Because obviously, even if you're in that little list, you've got that nice big vision. So they're, they're two things to get you more traffic straight away. 
they will get you more visible straight away. Make sure your meta page title says what you do and it includes terms that people are searching for. Because the, okay, the okay. Uh, Fiona, I yeah. asked uh, Doug if it's okay to share his page, so I could share his page. Would you like me to bring it up here so all of us can see it, or you want to say more on yeah, that page? Or, yeah. yeah. Okay. So let's just uh, do that. Okay. So all of us see that. So maybe you can also be a little specific, like tell people what exactly needs to be changed where, so people can yes. visually get an understanding. If you, you see how you've got, wow, you've got a lot of tabs open. You see how you've got a lot of tabs open. If you hover over the tab for Doug's site, there you go, you see that? Did you see what just popped up? Go back and just hover over his site. That's it, see that? Yes. That is your meta page title. Right. Right. That is what Google looks at more than anything. Right. So that wants to say, using hope to save lives, two, two times suicide victor, that's what people are looking for that's really key if that's what you're leading with douglas that's what your page title wants to say because then if people are searching for you know saving lives suicide those words are in there and you'll come up for that yeah i think that's a really awesome thing to do as well can I make a suggestion as well, Fiona, from my yeah. marketing view and my speaking view? Uh, one suggestion from my side would be, when I look at your page, um, Doug, I, I love the page. I love the picture. I love seeing you there, you know, using hope to save lives. And I love the title. Um, the big message that I'm probably going to look at first is the first thing we look at when we come to a website is a picture and the big message, right? So you're saying communication, uh, bring a communication, inspirational speaking services. So that is very clear. Fiona said it, clarity is important, right? Um, and then it's saying get in touch. The thing is, when I read this, it is about you and it is like, hey, you're offering speaking services. You're a speaker, which is great. It's clear for me. So if I'm an event organizer and I come to your page and I think like I resonate with the topic, I'm looking for a speaker, I definitely click and get in touch, right? But um, the, the question is always when you have a website or anything you do in marketing, really, the question is, what is your intention? Who do you try to reach? Is this website really a website to attract event organizers or is it a website to get potential clients to get into your programs, for example? Mm -hmm. If it's the first one, what you're doing here is perfect. But if you're trying client attract clients to talk to you so you could help them, um, you know, because maybe they're going through really a tough life or a tough time, then your website needs to, and your title needs to represent that. So always mm -hmm. think about who do I want to attract to my website and mm -hmm. what are these people looking for? So if you mm -hmm. want to attract event organizers, your key message is perfect because they say, oh, he's a speaker. I'm looking for a speaker. I'm going to get in touch with them and the topic resonates with me. Perfect. Mm. But let's assume, you know, a lot of speakers are also wanting, um, you know, to get clients to join their programs or join their events or something else. In that case, your, your website title would need to be aligned to what is the number one biggest pain or challenge or aspiration and dream that a person you want to attract on your website, um, you know, is wants to wants to fulfill or wants to get right. So I don't know, uh, Doug, is this website mostly, and you, only you can answer that, is this, and maybe just unmute yourself, is this website to attract event organizers to book you as a speaker? Yes. Yeah, good, perfect. And then you're spot on on that one, okay? So in that case, they would see you're a speaker, they would say, hey, what's this topic? And they would say, yes, he's a speaker, let me get in touch with him, right? Okay, that, that's great, okay? That's why it's so important to have marketing and technology working together on your website. Because if you just have a website that's just technical, it's great, don't get me wrong, but it's, it's not going to have the right message, as you say, to bring that across. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um, yeah, any other hints on how to... That was know, my rookie uh, attempt. Yeah, it's good. Your first attempt, awesome, well done. That is really <laughs> cool. Yeah. Now you only so need to make sure, yeah, the, the only thing is now Dax needs to make sure that there's a lot of event organizers 
coming to his website, right? Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. And we've got a question from, uh, where are we? Danya, Dajia? Um, Danya. Herman Shearer, Danya, sorry. Herman Shearer, the website for my speaker, should have a domain of my name and show me as a speaker if I want to be successful. Interesting, okay. Dee, 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 dee. As a singer, yeah. Does it mean I have to change my website? Dee, dee, dee. It would be great if you could answer the question. Absolutely. So, um, Danya, so you're saying that um, you already have a website, um, but it's you as a singer in different fields and now you want it to be um, for you as a speaker, then yes, it, it does definitely need to change, but it's worth keeping uh, the domain name, which is the uh, your name, having that as uh, still staying because it will take a lot longer to get a brand new domain name to come up in Google in the listing. So if that's already coming up, then that's great. It just means you need to change the content of the site so that when people get to it, they don't get confused. You don't want, it's that be clear. You don't want the confusion between, oh, I was looking for a speaker. I heard you're a speaker. I've come to your site and it says you're a singer. And now I, I don't know. I don't know if I'm in the right place. And the minute you, you get that disconnect, you lose them. So really, really important. Yes, you, you need to change your wording and your um, images, I imagine, on your website so that it's super clear. I mean, uh, what would you say, Fiona? Like someone like Danya, I know she's still doing her singing work, okay? Mm -hmm. And she also wants to position herself as a speaker. Yeah. So what she could do is keep her singing page in place, but create a new one that positions her yes. as a speaker. Yes? You, yeah, you can um, You can have it as, as two different things. As I say, we do websites and we do software, and people don't come to us for both. They come to us for one or the other. Um, but we mentioned when you come to our site, we do both. And then as you come down, it says, well, this is all about websites and this is all about um, software and then takes them off into separate pages. So if you just have one page about the singing and you wanted to keep that, absolutely keep that in there, but just move it away from the main message and then have one that's your speaker uh, career away from the main message. But the main message is I do speaking and performing contact me for this one, come to me for that one, and then takes you into separate pages. Because as well, then those individual pages can come up in Google for one will come up for singing, one will come up for speaking, but you don't then get them both come up for the same thing. Needs to be, again, that clarity. It's one thing, one key thing per page. But your home page can be like, I always say it's like the contents page of a magazine. If you open a magazine and the contents that used to be just a list and now it's like a big picture, this is our main article we want you to read, then there are these little articles, then there are these regular things, and it's that proportion. You can have that on your home page as well. All right. Okay, Danya, I hope that answers your question. If not, just uh, keep, you know, either unmute yourself or type in uh, if that answered your question, that would be great. Okay, so what other questions are coming up for all of you? Um, what's happening on your uh, website? What are you happy with or the other way around? What are you, what, where do you see room for improvement and why don't you uh, ask your questions to Fiona? I've got um, body wisdom and now that, that was a seven out of 10, I believe that one. So is yeah. this, this must be the new site that's gonna come up. That's cool, that's really exciting. Oh, lovely looking site, very nice. Having a quick sneaky peek. Spot on, that's lovely. That's got all the things that you said about, Monique. That's all the things about the clarity and who you speak to and what you have available. That's really nice. And of course, Google then picks up that it can be translated into different languages, which is fantastic. So I think that that's really, really good. It's got a nice look. I think it's something that we become very caught up in the technicality of a website, that it must be technically this and technically that and the coding the other. But it just, at, at the end of the day, it also needs to look nice. It's, it's really, really important that it also looks attractive. So um, your designer should always talk to you about who is it aiming at. Because um, if you're aiming at, uh, for example, we just did a site for a big kitchen and bathroom showroom. They do these beautiful, high quality, high end kitchens, all marble and beautiful things. And they wanted the whole site done in black and gray. And I was like, okay, but the trouble is your key audience is women. 
and we don't like a lot of black and gray don't get me wrong i wear black but it's it's on a website we don't like a dark screen we'll have bits of black you can have black as an accent or, or to pick things out but not they we want more pictures so it's more pictures and perhaps a slightly lighter color palette or if it's um beauty and, and like the yoga site that i'm just looking at it's very indulgent. It wants to feel like a very safe cocoon. So the colors are perfect for that because they're burgundies and, and deep maroons and things like that because they're very indulgent, enveloping colors. That's really important. But your designer should always ask, not what you like, but they should think about what your customers like when people look at it, What will because that will help with conversion. Right. So, um, Claudia, how happy are you with people coming to your website and doing what you want them to do? Um, yeah, well, my website is, is very new, so I try to make it a big difference from the old one. And uh, when I was uh, designing my, my website, just in my idea, I tried to to have this in what one half was what do I like most mm -hmm. and the other was the, the question as you just mentioned uh, if I am a customer and I will uh, from the other side yeah so to um, to have these two important questions and yeah, it's, it's, and one what is still missing is still I'm I'm still searching for the the right words, yeah. <laughs> but I'm <laughs> <laughs> uh, to do this uh, emotional uh, uh, business work. Mm -hmm. What I do and support people, and it's a huge emotional thing. Yeah. So to find the right words, yeah. this is still a huge challenge for me. And then also a few technical things. I, I want to like including a video, but mm -hmm. I need more courage to do a video. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what we're going to work on together, Claudia, right? Yes, um, yes. But, this but is one of my... Yeah, but on the language, to be honest, it's like, as Fiona said, uh, a website is created, better get it out than having it in the back of your mind and then no one sees you, right? Um, of course, it needs to have a certain quality to get it out, but still, you know, once that's reached, um, it needs to get out. And it's something you keep working on for a long time. So yes. the language would also come, you know, the more clients you work with, the more testimonials you're collecting. When you ask people that come to you also in the testimonial quest, uh, collection, uh, you ask them also, why did you come? You know, what brought you to us? What were you hoping to find? What challenges were you facing? Um, and that's the conversation you're having now as well with clients that you know, you're having conversations with uh, that consider working with you. You ask them these kind of questions and the more answers you get, the more you will not come up with the language yourself, but use the language the people you love working with are using, you see? So, you know, and, and again, you will keep adapting your website over time again and again. And uh, yeah, yeah, the video we're gonna put on soon. Um, are you feeling that a lot of people come to your website and then book events with you? Do you feel like there's quite a bit of booking going on? Because I think that this is a predominant part of your website, right? Mm -hmm. To get people to sign up to your events. Is that happening? Mm -hmm. Um, I think it's, it's, uh, they do have to book now, uh, through my website. That's correct. But it's still the most is, uh, how do they find me? It's from mouth to mouth. It's mm -hmm. still right. like this. And I'm working now to, to learn how to move on the platform, Facebook, LinkedIn. So it's still, still baby steps for me. All right. All right. But I'm, I'm on the, All right yeah so fiona maybe some hints for claudia to get more people actually to buy to to sign up for her events okay do you want me to yeah. put up the website again so that everyone can see it uh, claudia would you be happy yeah, if i do that great. just because it's yeah. nice to look at it's lovely <laughs> yeah exactly so let me just share but you can go ahead fiona give some hints to claudia as well well you you mentioned about getting people um you said you're looking at facebook and things like that is um to if you join facebook groups who are interested in what you're doing 
So if you, if you have a personal Facebook account and you um, have a look in there for groups, uh, all about um, yoga and um, you know, you've got the breathing and all of that sort of thing. You'll find there are people who've got those interests. They're already together. They're already talking about it online. Now, the, the mistake some business owners make is they join groups and then they post straight away. Oh, I do classes for this. You should speak to me. Don't do that. Don't try and sell through them. It's about building relationships. Facebook is all about building relationships with people. If you think if you went to a party and there was a load of people in the corner who were talking about websites, I wouldn't go up and say, oh, well, I do websites. You should talk to me and start pushing business cards in their hands. <laughs> I don't think I'd get invited again. So what you want to do is um, what you can do is, is approach it in a way like it's a party. And you hear someone saying, you know, oh, I'm really struggling. I, I can't focus in yoga. My mind wanders off or I can't quiet my mind. And you can say, oh, I, I struggled with that. And what I do is I combine it with, with um, breath work, with breathing. And that helps to really slow my mind. And you'll get, you want to give more than you receive. That's really the key with, with Facebook, joining these groups. But once people start to see that you're contributing and, and you're a, a, an expert at what you do and that you can advise and you, you don't mind giving free advice, then they will look at your profile. They will click your name in Facebook to look at your profile. So your personal profile wants to say, under career or your little biography, it wants to say your web address. It's another place to put your web address. So, you know, owner, proprietor, whatever word you're more comfortable with, creator of, and put your web address there. Because people then will click through to it. They will link through from that way. That's really worth doing. But Facebook is all about relationship building. Social is, really. I think we've forgotten that. Social media was invented to build relationships, but it's become such a powerful platform for getting a business message across that I think we forget it is about the relationships. Yeah. And uh, coming back to that, what you're saying is so powerful, Fiona, for you, Claudia, and everyone. Um, you, you know, how do you build relationships? As, as you're saying, you give, you start giving value. You start giving people an experience. You start, you know, giving them a little bit of who is she? Not only from a page, but you know, as you said, Claudia, you're thinking about putting a video up, right? Again, see if you, you know, in one of your next events, if you can have someone taking some videos there. So people can see, they can experience what's happening there. They can, you know, if, if you're doing it well, um, the, people can feel the energy of your events. They will see what's happening there. Um, you know, if you weave in then some video testimonials, which I often do when I give events, at the end of the event, I ask some people, hey, would you mind giving me a little video testimonial? And they always say, yes, of course, right? I mean, some people are not feeling comfortable. But uh, most of them are very happy to also say, yes, sure, I'm happy to speak on video about how that, you know, event was for me. So, and uh, again, if you are, you know, if you don't want to do it, you can even bring someone that does it for you, right? Mm -hmm. And you announce it at your event and you say, hey, at the end of it, I'd love, if you like being here, it would be amazing if you could give us a video testimonial at the end. And then you weave it into your video and you share it on your website. Because then again, people get a sense of what it is, right? And also, um, you know, you talking about giving value uh, and building relationships, um, especially from websites. I see a lot of websites where people have great information, great messages, and it's saying, and now get in touch with me. Yeah. Well, the thing is, there's a big step between being on your website for the first time and sending you a message saying, I want to talk to you. Often there's more steps in between needed to start creating trust and comfort that I'm in good hands with you and that you have something that is valuable to me. So as you said, Fiona, it's call to action, right? So think about what can you give people on your website so they start getting a first taste of working with you without having to talk to you or without having to come to one of your events because there's a little bit of a barrier Mm -hmm. you know, um, from a website visit to actually showing up at your doorstep, right? So ask yourself, what, what is it that you can give as value? Do you want to say a couple of suggestions or share a couple of suggestions, Fiona, on how to give value on your online platform? Yeah, yeah. You're, you're absolutely right. It, it's if you can give something, um, a free taster, or I tell you, I saw a fantastic one just two days ago. I saw um, a virtual assistant 
had a free guide how to get the best out of your virtual assistant. And you just put in your email address and you got added to her mailing list and you got this free two page, really beautifully designed guide on how to get the best out. And what it actually was, was how to get the best out of working with her. But it didn't say that. It was really nicely worded. It was very cleverly designed so that it came across as um, this is, you know, this will give you the best results. This will give you a speedier result. This will get you quickly to where you want to be. But what it actually was, was just what she wanted to say to them, you know, just try and be clear with expectations. You know, your virtual assistant won't be available 24 hours a day, things like this that she wanted to say to them. So that's a really good one is if you think Claudia about what you want to say to people that you think, well, I don't want to put on my website, you know, don't turn up and then expect to get changed for a yoga session, you know, arrive that you're changed and you're ready to go. Um, we don't provide mats, bring your mat. So rather than make it like a rule list, it convert it, just flip that around, reframe that so that it's, you know, here's how to get the best or how to get the most out of your first yoga session. And then just write just one A4 sheet that's something like make sure um, you're in comfortable clothing. The studio can be warm or the studio can be cool, you know, things like this. Bring layers so it's easy for you to, to get comfortable quickly. Um, bring your mat. Um, if you don't have a mat, you know, they're easy to get from XYZ. So they turn up with all their stuff ready. Um, we may play music or burn incense during the session. If this is something that, uh, uh, you know, will make you sneeze or something like that, then you can always have, uh, you know, we can put you further from the incense. But it, it's, it's a basically, it's a how to make the most out of their time with you. But you dress that really nicely as how to, how they can really have a great experience at any yoga session. And obviously you have your web address at the bottom. I keep banging on about the web address. I know but it has your web address at the bottom, but you have that as a PDF that all they have to do is pop their email address in and they can see your PDF straight away on your website and you've got their email address. So it helps you build your list and that in itself builds a connection. So that's, that's a really easy way to do it. Oh, sounds gone funny. Great. Okay. Um, Marja, I don't know if uh, you want to ask a question or if you're doing something in the background. Um, but uh, yeah, any other questions that are coming up from anyone uh, at the moment? This is your opportunity. Um, I know Roger was saying you, you're doing the final touches on your website. You plan to release it by the end of this month. So perfect. Excellent. Okay. Um, do you have any open questions for Fiona on your website at the, at the moment? Or, you know, I think, uh, Fiona, we have uh, time for another one or two questions. Yeah, Are you absolutely. Okay with that? I was going to say, actually, um, I had a, a sneaky peek at Roger's and he doesn't have a holding page. Pop up a holding page, Roger, just a single page that just says your name and your phone number and coming soon or your name and your email and coming soon. And that's a, a really good way to get people already connecting before your website's even launched. Right. Okay, maybe we can give some additional hints and tips on, uh, you know, what other things people could put up there as, uh, you know, for giving some value and building relationships. So what mm -hmm. I've seen uh, always works. And uh, I did it on my very first website that was really helping me to actually get people to engage and connect is like any kind of quizzes, right? People love quizzes, oh, yeah. right? They, yeah. they answer them, they, they want to check, you know, where am I on this topic? Um, and again, it's a great opening and, and also it's a great way to collect contact information because once people answer the quiz, you say you're going to get uh, more detail. Either you give them something small right away or you give them, you say, hey, um, you know, if you want to have a detailed report on that with concrete suggestions. And I had fully automated that on my website, obviously, as well. Um, yeah, you know, yeah. Then uh, you put in your contact details and people do that, right? It's a great way of not only um, getting them engaged once, but start actually a journey of engaging them again and again, right? So, yes. yeah. yeah. So quizzes and is you great. Can use that oh, yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Sorry, I was just gonna say, you can use that same premise sometimes for your existing clients as well. Um, we uh, have a little video that we put together of how we work with people, taking them through our five-step process to a successful website. And we also use that with clients once they've onboarded, 
because sometimes they forget and you have like the sales process is all wonderful and bells and whistles. And then they start working with you and they think, oh, what's the next step? What happens next? So that what happens next is just as important once the clients are on board as, as before, because then you retain them as a client. They tell more people and that's the best way to, to spread the word about your website and what you do is to get that word of mouth. But yeah, getting getting free stuff or anything that explains, explainer videos are huge. And anyone who's nervous about doing videos, I have an absolute brilliant tip. Firstly, make sure you've got good lighting, because I'm not in a great room today and I look a bit washed out. But make sure you've got good lighting, but video what you want to say and do not watch it back. Now, some people disagree with that, but if I watched my videos again, I would never put them up. I just think, oh no, oh my hair, oh my accent, oh my face, oh, and I just, I can't do it. So record it, publish and be damned. Don't look at it, just put it out there because it really does make a difference. I, I've put up all sorts of really slick, beautiful animated videos and designed videos that I've had other people do. And the ones where I just think, you know what, there's something I really want to say and I don't want to forget it. And I record it in five minutes on my phone and I just put it up there and leave it out there. They are always, always the ones that get the most engagement. They always yeah. are. People want that reality. Yeah. People want a real you, right? And yeah. uh, I got to pick up some words that you said are so important. I just tweak one of the words you said, get it out and be damned. I say get it out and be celebrated. <laughs> oh, because, I like that better. Yeah, that's okay. better. <laughs> <laughs> because the, it's so true. Just trust that there will be just one person either right away or a year later that mm -hmm. will pick up your hint and tip and do something with it and it's going to change their life. You can yeah. always trust that. Mm -hmm. And I remember when I did videos um, at the beginning, I, you know, I was also like, I, I followed your advice. It's like bungee jumping, right? Don't think, don't look down, right? So, <laughs> you know, just jump, right? <laughs> so um, it, it's the same with video, just get it out there. And uh, I'd say, watch it again, but don't delete it from the, from wherever you have it out there. Okay. So, yeah. so watch it, learn from it, ask for feedback. Um, and you will always see like 50 videos down the line. It's going to be an entirely different quality, right? Yeah. So just get it out. And uh, also, uh, Marja, Marja asked me, um, what did you use to automate quizzes and gifts? So in my case, it was actually, um, you know, programmed into my WordPress website. Mm -hmm. um, that was back then. But today, there's a lot of platforms that actually offer quizzes and make it very easy to implement them uh, and connect them with your website. And I haven't used it for a while. Uh, Fiona, do you have some concrete hints and tips? There's lots of um, plugins um, that you get, which is what WordPress uses. Yeah. So there's yeah, there's lots of plugins that you can you can just pop those in into your site. But again, it, it's an easy little thing to add, and it's something that a, a developer, a web developer, can add to an existing site quite easily. Yeah. That's the thing. And when when people say, oh, you know, I'd need to do redo my whole site. No, you don't. If you've got an existing site in WordPress, or if you coded it yourself, or anything like that. It's really straightforward to just get a developer just say, all I want you to do is plug in these questions as a quiz. People have to put their email address in before they see the quiz or after they see their results, uh, before they see the results, sorry. And then that just gives them that little incentive. But that's something a developer can do just as that part of your site. They don't need to redevelop your site. Exactly. And some developers will say that they have to, and they don't. <laughs> they don't, and and I also know there's uh, there's if you're using WordPress, there's WordPress plugins you can use, and uh, there's also some uh, platforms that offer uh, you know quizzes to integrate them into your website pretty easily. Yeah. So maybe do a little yeah. bit of an online research, um, and maybe it's also a good question to ask in our my speaker business community or our business community, and uh, ask that question. Some people that have an answer to that. Uh, last question from Marja. Fiona, do you use landing pages and sales funnels with your clients in addition to your static websites? Oh, great question. Um, I usually get asked for landing pages um, and sales funnels if they have a specific um, product or program that they're pushing as a new thing. 
So it tends to be the website is about the company as a whole, everything that they offer, everything they do with, with that uh, magazine style introduction to where to go to look for the bits you're interested in. But if they're launching a new program specifically, then yes, um, we do use landing pages and sales funnels, which are very specifically just for that product, just for that service to follow it through. Um, the nice thing about doing that is that if you have a time limited offer of any sort, then that works really, really well because you can have it open, sell what you need to sell for the time you need to sell it, and then you hide it. And then you can do it again another time. Um, we've done that recently for a uh, company selling uh, this little doohickey, this little, <laughs> little gadget that stops um, spam phone calls coming through. And they only had, I think it was two and a half thousand units to begin with. So we did a special landing page rather than redesign their whole site, just do a special landing page just about that product, promoted that in its own right, took all of the connections through that into one particular mailing list. Then we switched it off when they'd sold two and a half thousand units, which was in about two days. And now they've just literally just contacted me and said, we've got another 5,000 units. We want to switch it back on. So it means you don't have to pay the same amount every time. You can pay to have it done once, then hide it, then use it again. Or if you launch a new program and it's still going, it's not time limited, you can then duplicate that to make another program landing page. So it just helps you with your money. So you're not paying over and over again to, to do everything from scratch from the start every time. Great. And of course, also, you know, whatever you're doing on your website, you can always integrate a sales funnel into it. If you have something like a long, a long term kind of offer program or whatever you want to promote through your website, you can always add a sales funnel to that. And I think, uh, Fiona, you're also um, actually yeah, offering creating these kind of things. Right. So. Oh, yes. Yes, we do all of that as well. Yeah, we'll we'll code something from scratch always. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Okay, so um, Fiona, I think that you and I and everyone here could probably be on the call for another day, right? <laughs> but uh, we've been here already more than an hour trying to serve and support Gosh. everyone in the greatest possible way. So I know that some, some of our mem members might want to get in touch with you. What's the best way of getting in touch? I know you're using LinkedIn a lot, so why don't you just share with everyone? Yes, LinkedIn is the best way. If you um, search for my name, it, it is fairly unique, <laughs> has half the alphabet. Um, so yeah, if you search for Fiona Almontrine on LinkedIn, I will pop up. I'd be really happy to connect with anybody who's been on the call today and answer any further questions you have or see if I can help you with your websites or online systems to help you go further because that's what we're all about. We just all lift together. Perfect. Love it. And uh, Fiona, you and I will be uh, doing magic on websites together. So looking forward to Fantastic. that. So thank you so much for being here today um, and uh, for sharing all your wisdom, your advice. Um, and, uh, you know, do you want to round it off with maybe just one encouragement suggestion on what people can do as a next step to rock it and to yeah. bring their own website and their online presence into to another level? Definitely. The key thing is to publish it. Publish and celebrate, as I'm now saying. <laughs> but it is to publish it because your website is never done. It is an organic, living thing. It should be, you should be looking at it all the time. I, look, I review my website every month, and sometimes I think that's not enough. It's really important to keep looking at it, keep tweaking it, perfecting it, but little changes. Because if you make big changes too often, Google will drop you down. I have one client who wanted to redesign his website every six months and every six months he would build up and then he would drop down and he would build up and drop down and it's not worth it. Just little tweaks, fine tune and perfect, fine tune and perfect as you go, but just accept that it's always going to be happening. It's always going to be changing because the technology changes as well and find yourself a good web development partner who can work with you in business and really make sure, you know, a new iPhone comes out, you want to make sure that work, your site works on their phone. A new laptop size comes out, you want to make sure that your website works on that. So it's good partnerships, but constant improvement. We, we call it literally, it's continuous improvement is what we, we aim at all the time. 
Oh, they asked for my contact. Perfect. And I was uh, trying to find your, let me just uh, put in your name again here for everyone, Almond Train. Okay, on LinkedIn. Uh, I just wanted to, because uh, Marja asked, what's your contact information again, Fiona? Okay, so here's yeah. her name. If you enter that name on LinkedIn, you will find her, connect her there with her, get in touch and uh, have a chat about your website and your online presence. So thank you so much. Okay, yes, get it out there and celebrate. Love that. And uh, do it step by step. It's like planting a beautiful garden, building a beautiful house. Yeah. Never stops, right? So we yeah. keep working on things. Always. And there's so much more around a website to web presence, but uh, you know, again, it, the, the website is the foundation to present yourself. It's your shopping window to the world and you want to get that right. You want to display something that gets people through the door in touch yeah, with you, working definitely. with you. Definitely. Yeah. Thank you so much for all these uh, golden nuggets and practical hints and tips. Uh, thank you for being on the call with us today, Fiona, and I hope we served and supported all of you. Thank you for, for being here with us, each of you, Claudia and Doug, Roger, Marja, and Dania, everyone. And uh, Sheena also, who joins us late, but uh, hopefully you picked up some hints at the end of it. So um, yeah, wishing you an amazing month. And again, um, Fiona, we'll, I'm, we'll make sure you're part of our community now as well. So if questions Thank come up in so the next much. couple of days, please keep an eye out on that. That would be great. And uh, yeah, we're gonna have another amazing guest uh, next month with us. So please uh, check in in February. Uh, the next call is already on the 4th of February. It's gonna be early in the month, exceptionally. Um, and uh, all of you just enjoy taking one or two hints and tips from Fiona and making that happen so that you uplift your web presence as well in powerful ways. So all the best. Uh, let's take the next steps and let's be in touch with uh, uh, with each other on in our my speaker business community and our business community as well of course have a fabulous month and uh, most of you will be in touch sooner than that anyhow okay have a great time have a great day thank Until you many thank thanks you Fiona. Fiona. thanks for thanks all bye thank you guys bye